So <laughs> there was, <laughs> there was uh, some things that I started in the beginning. I thought they were quite funny. <laughs> Alchemist says, I'm expecting all of you to be wrong. And, and, and to, to be fair, let's be honest, who here is 100% correct, right? And even, even the people that say, you know, Bitcoin's going to go to 8K or the crypto market's going to totally collapse or we're going to be in a depression for 10 years. People say it. Who really knows? We're all guessing at this point. And then, of course, my man, when Mullet says, <laughs> uh, as you always are, meaning so whatever. I thought it was funny. And then this was a good comment from Darth Mike. He says, rather than waiting for the bottom, just DCA, just DCA all the way down, as I don't think it's going much lower. And, you know, Darth Mike, might, might, he might be correct. I mean, we might. We just took a look at that, right? We just saw that over at this nice little graphic, crypto quants, you know, 1.2. And again, this could be data that's all just, you know, cherry pick. I mean, this is reasonable data. But again, does that mean that the bottom's at, you know, one or lower? The bottom could be 0 0.25, which would mean like it could put us at Bitcoin down at, you know, 18,000. Is that a possibility? Yes, it's a possibility. So if... Um, the thing I always say is like this, if you're unsure, like I can't time markets. If there's a funny thing, I can't buy the absolute top and I can never sell the absolute bottom. Crazy to think about, right? So because of that, I just DCA. Now, some people like friend of the show, Ben over in the Cryptoverse will say, this is not the accumulation phase and Ben could very well be right. So he thinks that we've got a long way to go or a little bit of way to go. We're going to go down and then he wants to accumulate. I say I'm in between. I do what's called, now I'm doing what's called micro DCAing, where instead of buying every day, I buy every other week and I flip flop different cryptos. Now I still buy Bitcoin every day. I think that's like your blue chip. Ethereum I've actually laid off of. I'm very concerned about this merge. I don't think it's going to be the greatest thing of all time like people think it is, but there's some other layer ones and some things that I'm, I'm buying uh, every so often. And if I'm, if I'm wrong, eh, whatever. Let's say we, we drop in there 50%. I don't care. I'm here for the next 10, 20 years. As long as my heart will allow it. Yeah, that's right. Let's see. No one knows anything. It's all exactly right. And Darth Mike says, I want to try to get as many different points of view to avoid being locked in the echo chamber. Yes. And that's why, like, if you look in my description of all my videos, I'll show you right now. And where the heck did it go? Not this one. Not this one. This one. So if you, if you scroll down in the description, here's all the people I listen to, and I recommend you to, take, to check them out. Coin Bureau, CT Larson, and Best Answers in the Cryptoverse, Hashoshi, Biggie Crypto for all you Spanish speakers, Crypto Stash, and Simon Dixon. Might have to add on uh, Mark McCormick, or Mark McCormick, Peter McCormick. But I don't want you to listen to me just totally because that's not a good idea. And like Darth Mike said, it is, a, it is an echo chamber. So you got to watch other people and you got to read up and you got to do a lot of things. This one's funny. Moon Man, in seven years, quantum computers will make seed phrase vulnerable. You better ride the wave while you can. Look, here's another thing. If quantum computers come out and they break the, uh, the cryptography to get into and actually exploit the blockchain, we got a lot bigger issues to worry about than that because that means that every username and password for every single bank account, every single electricity usage, every single thing that you need to get in for a username and password is irrelevant. So I think that is something up. That's a, there's a bigger issue beyond that. Just like when people say, oh, but Rob, what about an EMP, an electric uh, magnetic, electromagnetic pulse that would wipe out uh, the, all the Bitcoin nodes? I'm like, look, man, if an EMP hits us on a global scale and the, the nodes go out, guess what else is going to go out? Everything else. I got a lot bigger issues to worry about than Bitcoin. So just saying. And then uh, uh, Farnoosh, Farnoosh says, should I sell my alts with a loss now or wait? I've sold some alts. I don't know if they were really, there wasn't, there was some that I took a loss and some I did not. I think that things are going to go down farther. But I just said, well, you know, like these things kind of suck. And they did. I held on to them for too long. I just wanted to consolidate. But I still own a, a good amount of different things. So, but remember, like, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, I like Cardano. 
uh, some other ones. I think those are going to be, you know, do pretty well as time goes on. Again, take your pick. And of course, people are screaming at the screen right now going, but Rob, what about my coin? What about your coin? You know, I can't get them all, man. So I'm going to miss a lot more opportunities than I'm actually going to hit. That's just how it goes. All right. What? Oh, this is a great question. What's your feeling of the new loyalty program the Voyager has put out? Well, let me tell you. I think it's fantastic. I mean, it's a step in the right direction. So, the, so first of all, link in the description for, for Voyager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, of course, I'm, I'm out here shilling like crazy. But look, if you open up a Voyager account, I think you get like $25 in Bitcoin. Just saying, you don't have to use the affiliate link. Go right to Voyager. Sign up. You just get, you just get 25 bucks in Bitcoin. And... The loyalty program came out, and the biggest knock of the loyalty program was when they first did that, you know, Voyager was like pennies, and now it's like a buck, whatever. So there was different, there was three different tiers. I think it was like a thousand, five thousand, like twenty thousand. People were like, man, I'll never hit that. And I might even hit the, the middle one. So now they instead of having three tiers, they have six tiers, and they have a debit card, and uh, there's a lot more. There's in-kind rewards, so you're not just getting Voyager back. You're actually getting in, I think it's Bitcoin, USDC, and Ethereum. Correct me, and I'm, I'll do a video on it. Uh, but there's a lot of people who have already done videos on it, but I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. I think it looks good. Now, for every loyalty program that comes out, people are like, well, I would like to see X, and they didn't do Z, and, and, and Y isn't even available. <sighs> Can't get them all, man. So I think it looks good, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, oh, so Jim says, Rob, you referenced watching James DCA video twice. What did you take away from it that may influence your DCA strategy? So James is a big numbers guy, obviously, right? And uh, he's talking about just going from the all-time highs. And then depending on how much it drops, let's say Bitcoin all-time high was 67, 69,000, somewhere around there. And he says down to a certain point, then you should start to whatever you're, and this is where it's all relative. Let's say you buy 100 bucks of Bitcoin every single day, right? even up to 69,000. Well, then when it drops to a certain point, whatever point you think it is, then you say, okay, here, let's say it drops down 30%, right? I'm going to increase my DCA of 10%. So instead of 100 bucks, you buy 110 bucks. Then let's say it drops 50%. Okay, well, now you're going to add in more. Really, it's almost the same. It's similar, but not the exact same to what Ben always talks about as far as uh, dynamic DCA. All you got to know is this. As the price starts to drop down precipitously, you say, okay, what I want to do is I can do one of two things. I can keep DCAing, which is what I do because I'm lazy. I, let the, I, I just let, the, I just let my, my app just buy for me. And I don't have to worry about it. And it goes down. And then let's, you know, whatever that point is, you say, I want to increase it by 10%, 30%, 50%, or even 100% more and just keep DCAing. You can do that. It's just that sometimes there's some problems with it. I like to kind of, take a look at, at the situation and go, okay, what exactly is the big issue right here? Like back when, when COVID hit, I'm like, fundamentally, nothing's really changed. So I would probably buy more of Bitcoin, which we did and it worked out okay. So for me, like it's not gonna, I liked the idea and it makes sense. And if you're very regimented, but I'm not, I will just uh, keep the DCA going. And then if we drop like, like I'll be honest with you, if we went from 30,000 to 25,000, <laughs> I would increase the DCA amount I buy every day. And we go from 25,000 to 20,000, it would be even more so because there's no reason. I think there was a stat that just came out that says uh, around 30 million people in the United States out of 320, 330 million people uh, have interacted or used Bitcoin. And uh, I can only think that that number is going to go up over time. So sure. Ah, love the show with Guy. It was pretty good. Do I not have sound? I hope so. Uh, okay. So Robin just put that in. I don't know why that is. Do I not have sound again? Okay, Darth Mike says I have sound. Ugh, okay. 
guy is misleading and accurate, like I am the guy and accurate, you have to, you have to clarify. Call me worse names, I suppose. Uh, so next survivor says, people compare Bitcoin's adoption curve to the internet and the mobile phone. How does Bitcoin provide anywhere near the same usefulness, utility, or value that those things provide? Depends on where, how you look at it. So I'm unfortunately always looking through the lens of, of an American. I don't know where you're from, next survivor, but that's one of my downfalls. And I try to get out of that, that realm. So as far as like human rights and trying to get that value to you uh, for these different countries, there's huge opportunity and there's not huge opportunity, there's huge value in being able to put your money into something and just having it uh, retain that value. Now, just like Peter McCormick and Lynn Alden talked about, sometimes it actually works a little bit better to put that value into a said stable coin. So to me, like the internet was great. We'd get a lot of information, a lot of information. You know what the problem is with the internet? A lot of the information is useless because it's either inaccurate, it's either wrong, it's either put out by bots, or it is just moving us into a certain way. Take a look at the last two elections here in the United States. But yeah, it has a huge amount of value. And as far as the mobile phone, absolutely, right? We have, have a lot of value. But if we don't have any kind of monetary value uh, with us, uh, what does that mean for us? And then here's, here's another, another, another problem. You might, an, 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 a, hypo, a hypothesis. So if we look at CBDCs, and those are regulated and controlled by the centralized government or centralized banks, and just like they have in China, same speaking points, you don't have a good social score and they turn off your ability to pay for things. Well, now, no matter what you have on the internet or the mobile phone, uh, you better believe that Bitcoin becomes, and stable coins, become uh, a very big deal to help you survive. So just in that regard, I will say like that. And then lastly, I will say the last thing is this. How many times have you been hacked? How many times have you lost your data? How many times has your personal information been put out on the internet? I don't know about you, but it happens to me all the time. Not all the time, but it's happened uh, a good way too many times than I'd like to, especially data breaches, right? Everybody who's watching this show right now has some kind of data that's floating out around there. Because why? Because the, the system that we have are inadequate. What if you could build a, an app, a DAP, any kind, of, any kind of program on top of the most secure network on the entire planet? Well, that's what Bitcoin is, if you think about it. Has Bitcoin ever been hacked? Mt. Gox has been hacked, Binance has been hacked, everything else has been hacked. Has Bitcoin been hacked, hacked with their 10,000 plus nodes? You have to actually attack a third or 51% of those, those nodes to actually change anything. So if you could build on top of that, how much is that worth to you? So hope that answers your question in a type of big thinking type of uh, little, little way uh, to help you out. All right. I don't know. Uh, so why does it matter where they mine Bitcoin? There's a lot of ways to say this. And, and, and first of all, you have to understand for, for the Bitcoin mining operations, just because they have a bunch of Bitcoin miners in, say, China, doesn't mean that if you were, and this was what happened in 2017, 2018, if you're a Bitcoin miner, you can just say, I want to connect to Poolin network, uh, which is based in China, but I have my own independent rig and I'm helping with the hash power to mine Bitcoin. You can do that and you could be in Ireland and you can just say, oh, well, at this point I want to be there with China and you can move around. So again, the hash rate power was very subjective to where it actually was. That's as far as what the Bitcoin miners tell me. So the, then the thing becomes like, well, where do you want the ability for all these miners to actually happen? Do you want that in China? Personally, I don't want it in China, just like uh, I don't like a lot of manufacturing companies in China, just like I don't like all the jobs to be shifted over to China. I'm sorry, I, I'm an American. And a lot of places, I will not apologize for that. So I don't think, I don't like the fact that when we had these different crises, we couldn't manufacture our own materials 
to create masks and whatever else that we need. We had to always re uh, rely on Chinese workers and, and Chinese industry. I despised it. So to me personally, I don't like uh, anything over there. I think we should all be taken back into our own countries. And uh, I don't like the fact that they were over there because that leads to less job creation and less jobs over here. So I'm super happy when China dropped the ball. I'm also happy when a different other countries like Kazakhstan also dropped the ball, which means we can bring them over here and that leads to job creation over here. That's just how I think. So. <laughs> can you feel people honesty? Some CEOs seem very greedy. Well, they make a lot of money. All right. The pool is a honeypot. Uh, yeah. What? Jason Chanley says, going for 10K steps, four miles again. I'd like to get on the show. What he's talking about is, uh, there's a link in the description. And it's for uh, Sweatcoin. And it's a free app. And uh, I've talked about it all the time on the show. But you can go against me for the steps. And if you beat me in the steps, which I'm just telling you right now, you won't. If you're able to beat me in the steps, like there's three options if you beat me for the month of June. You can either come on the show, I'll have you on the show, we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, the second thing is I'll do a port your portfolio, I'll review it. Or the third thing is I'll give you 50 sweat coins. So again, link in the description, there's like a little running man icon, it says sweat coin, download here. And again, it's 100% free. And uh, they're going to be moving from just this reward token, which is not a cryptocurrency, to a crypto digital asset in quarter three. So that's why I'm, I'm uh, excited about it. And that's it. Yeah. China made the crisis, but USA making the war and did crisis. Yeah. I mean, look, we're not squeaky clean. Let's be honest. America has been the bully for quite some time. Uh, let's see. Well, that's try not to devolve into, into politics. That's one way to really alienate a lot of people. Rob, are we going to get an alt season anytime soon? I don't think this year is our year, everybody. I think, I think if you're a trader, this is probably like a godsend. Like, hasn't it been between like 28,000 and 31,000 for Bitcoin? I mean, if, if, you're, if you're a trader, whew, you're probably like, this is the best thing of all time. I can't wait to make a boatload of money. You probably are. Uh, but for investors, it just kind of slow goes the boat. So, yeah. And Brian's got a good one. When the market flips up, I'm ready. Probably stacking cash. Not a bad idea. <laughs> I would also like to see that Bitcoin not be owned by the Chinese government. Yeah, it's always some very nice thing. Well, I see with our son. Hopefully, hopefully we with sound. I've done a lot of these live shows. That's the first time it's happened. <laughs> it's never happened to me, baby. I don't know what happened. <laughs> first Coast Crypto, where I was reporting from the pool spot for years. That's true. Yeah, and people think like this is like the greatest thing of all time. Look, we've had, me and my wife had, had this, this coming up in 19 years uh, for this place. And uh, it's not, it just because it looks cool doesn't mean it is cool. Like, remember, there's no air conditioning in here. And I'm out here like when it's 100 degrees. And the reason is, is because I don't like to sit in inside. I always like to be outside. So sometimes it gets a little hot. But it uh, looks nice, but it's not the greatest thing of all time. Let's see. When market, when market flips, all all kind lovers will be be lovers. Be lovers. Sure. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. People ring their phones, the makeshift machines get stuff. I have no idea. Uh, great. I can't tell how much I appreciate you guys doing a deep dive in my question. It really meant a lot to me. Thanks. I uh, hope we could answer your question. Like, again, it's better to have three heads better than one. So it's always good to have those guys on. Tether up, you all. Not a bad idea. Yeah, I'm gonna touch that one. <laughs> what was your what was your mild time in high school? I don't know, but in the military you you have the PT test and it's two mile run, push ups and sit ups. And the fastest I ever did a two mile was thirteen twenty. That's the, that's a two mile. That's as fast as I could ever do it. I'm not a runner. 
but I always maxed out on push-ups and sit-ups. That was pretty easy. Okay, fresh. Thanks, I tried that. I think that's it. Yeah, it's a little windy today. And it's a good point. Where'd it go? Dave, you says, right. Uh, Bitcoin pumps first. Bitcoin does pump first. So remember, that's the thing, like... In, 20, in early 2017, the alts were nothing. And then all of a sudden, Bitcoin would pump. And it was like, it's, it's like all the alts would just ride the coattails. And then before you know it, you'd have all these alts that would start to come up. And it would almost catch it. And then Bitcoin would come up again. And then they would come up and catch. And then Bitcoin would fall. And the altcoins would fall. And then before you know it, everybody's like, oh, man, you know, this, they try to get into Bitcoin. Like, Bitcoin's just old, you know, boomer tech. And we don't need it. I don't hear that too often now. <laughs> uh, so this is a great question. Is I trust IRA good for a young person with a minimum wage job? Well, you gotta think about it. And I can't give you investment advice, but I'll just tell you, I'll be honest with you. Uh, when I was younger, a long time ago, in the 20s, I didn't think about Roth IRAs and retirement. Who cares, right? I need that money now to put into stuff. If you're like a pretty young person, minimum wage job, I wouldn't, me personally, I wouldn't do it. I'd be like, no, you know what? I wouldn't. I know some people would say, but Rob, what about if you're, when you get to 65 and a half? I don't know. I mean, that's a long time. If you're 18, 19, 20 years old and you're going down that route, I mean, to make it, I would wait, especially a minimum wage job, right? Uh, I think there's better options, honestly. That's just me. Now, if you're a little more established and you got, you know, you got some kids, been around for a while and you're like, you know what? I don't like these taxes because I know it's going to be, it's going to crush me as time goes on. Roth IRA. But again, talk to the guys over at uh, iTrust. Links in the description. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. And why no stable coins in Texas? I can, you can still get, sta I mean, you can still use stable coins. It's just, you're limited as to which exchanges you can use. There's a big difference. So like um, Binance US, Texans, you can't use Binance. And I'm not sh I can use Celsius but I also don't live in Texas, Texas. I live in Puerto Rico. That's my main place. That's where I'm usually at. Just, we live in Puerto Rico, but we vacation in Texas. I know it seems backwards, but it's just how it is with us. Yeah. If you're young at best now, and just put it in there, don't even think about it. Uh, I can't even get a job. There's a lot of jobs out there, Shaolin, but it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, great. All right, guys, that's it. So I got to go and cut out all that. <laughs> that part of the, uh, the video was me not with no audio. Damn, that sucks. But we'll go again. Anyhow, that's it for today. Look, we've gone 50 minutes. That's it. Get out there. Enjoy the, enjoy the day. Don't look at your portfolio. It's just going to go sideways anyhow. Nobody cares. People care. Thanks so much for stopping by. Appreciate it. Like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. All the good stuff. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios.